following program, Normal Show Live, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, And I think we need to rethink and repersonalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... Normal Show Live, Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good afternoon, tokers and toquettes, and welcome. It is finally Friday, September 30th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for joining us here. We're glad to bring you this next 60 minutes of news talk, interview information interviews and more uh it's been a long month and uh it's going to get even more fun coming up this next week uh starting tomorrow starting october 1st we've got a new lineup here at the normal network a lot of the shows that you uh, know and love are still going to be with us but we're adding some new ones we've got a new live show debuting uh the a different view show which is an all women's uh talk show on uh, cannabis uh, issues going on live here on mondays at eight o'clock we've also got a uh, Normal Rocks with Herb Thrasher coming up on October 14th. That'll be a live Friday show uh, featuring our own Herb Thrasher getting deep into the rock and roll. And uh, other shows include Sensi Life Radio from X Cannabis, a Christian themed uh, marijuana podcast. We got Hemp Radio from Candace Hawes in uh, the Orange County Normal. And uh, Hemp Can Save the Planet debuting live tomorrow at 3 o'clock on Saturdays, a two hour show featuring Melissa White, Chocolate Ballon, and Steve Bloom from Celeb Stoner. But uh, Let's get to our own show here. Let's introduce from our virtual studio the lovely and talented Cannabis Carrie. Hi, Carrie. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Having a lot of fun out here in Astoria today. I, I'm glad everything's working just fine. Do you still have uh, guests, uh, more stashers up there with you? I do have some stashers, Stone, Kidney, and Bong Water. Beck, you're here. We just got back from uh, doing a little hiking in the Oregon forest. We went to Young's River Falls. It was great. The oh. salmon are starting to return. Yeah, Young's River Falls is awesome. Been there a couple times. Carrie brings us our headlines right after the first break. So uh, what's in the news today, Carrie? Well, today we're going to talk about uh, the Rhode Island dispensaries and what's going on there. Also, we're going to cover an Oregon bus by the feds. And since it's Friday, I snuck in a stupid stoner story. That's all coming up today. Okay, cool. I've got a couple other stories, too, that are, are sitting around uh, kind of showing how now that it's Harvin, the violence is starting to come out, the violence inherent in Bishon is starting to affect medical marijuana gardeners. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Also on today's show, it's Rockin' Friday. Boy, I can't wait for today's Rockin' Friday. Herb Thrasher is bringing us not one, but two songs from the hellbilly himself, Hank Williams III. Uh, two Rockin' Friday songs today. A double shot of Hank Williams III for you. Uh, Hank's put out four albums. It's really amazing. And uh, Herb will tell you all about it. And then at half past, Danny Danko from High Times Magazine, the senior cultivation editor, he's going to be joining us, taking your live grow quest questions in our Cultivators Corner. You can call in live at 971-533-7111 or get your questions in via our chat room and Danny Dank will be here to answer them live. We're back with the news right after this. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to WeedMaps.com. 
Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Hey, this is Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger Seeds, TGAgenetics.com, and you're listening to The Normal Network. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415 415- 489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration raided a large medical marijuana grow on Thursday in the southern Oregon town of Gold Hill. Keith Rogers, an insurance agent that owned the land, said that he had made sure that he and the 20 people that he allowed to grow medical marijuana on property he owns were all legal under Oregon's medical marijuana law. But that, however, did not stop about 30 federal agents who broke down the doors of five rental homes and pointed guns at he and his wife and did a strip-style search of the house of five renters. They brought in backhoes to rip out hundreds of plants and seized all the mature plants along with shotguns, cell phones, and a tractor. He says that when they were getting the tractor off the property that the septic system for the four homes that he has on the property was destroyed and all the renters have to move out. Roger said that if anyone from the state who was administering the Oregon medical marijuana laws would have come to check his eight acres of land, they would have looked at their papers and happily drove off finding him compliant. He contends that this is strictly the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration throwing their weight around and saying that the voters of Oregon don't have rights. Roger says that he was presented with a search warrant on Monday from an undercover federal investigator with the DEA. The warrant included aerial photos of his property. Keith Rogers said that the agents recorded that they seized 451 plants, but that many of them were very small, dying, or broken, so the actual number would be closer to 350. But he says that Oregon law allows a grower to have six plants for up to four patients each, and that if he has all of his paperwork verifying that the people growing medical marijuana as property were within the law, and indeed, if all 20 growers were growing the maximum, they could have had up to 480 plants to remain within the confines of the Oregon medical marijuana law. Rogers, who is 58 years old, his land almost went into foreclosure because he was having trouble renting the houses on the property until he allowed one renter to grow medical marijuana. Then he allowed all five renters as well as other people to grow on the property, saying that he agreed to what was going on and that it was that or give it back to the bank. He still says he has a mortgage payment to make and contends he is just a guy trying to keep his property, but he feels that this setback will certainly push him into bankruptcy, but uh, whatever the criminal outcome may be, there were no arrests made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it's all about the money, folks. Uh, yeah, this guy is in deep trouble. Uh, the Oregon law allows six mature plants and 18 immature plants, and immature plants are defined as less than 12 inches tall, non-budding plants. Uh, so he could have had, uh, with the, that many renters and everybody that was registered, could have had up to 120 of the mature plants and 360 of the immature plants under Oregon law. And like he says, if the Oregon uh, sheriff had stopped by, they had to check to see that all the paperwork was legit. 
legit and everything had been just fine. But no, now the DEA wants to throw its weight around. We're seeing more of this. We're seeing more raids as it gets close to harvest season. The Obama administration has not let up on this. They're just as bad as the Bush administration before them. Uh, it is time for these raids to stop. It is time for the government to start respecting the Tenth Amendment and allowing the states to set their own policies when it comes to the use of medical marijuana. <laughs> And we've been waiting for dispensary regulations that were promised in part of the medical marijuana programs now in New Jersey, Arizona, Maine, Washington, D.C., and also Rhode Island. Well, yesterday, the governor of Rhode Island, Lincoln Chafee, announced that he has pulled the plug on the state's program to open three medical marijuana dispensaries in the state. The decision comes after five months of delays on how to proceed with issuing licenses to three dispensaries that have already made it through the selection process by the State Department of Health last spring. Governor Chafee he released a statement that said, quote, after much internal and external discussion and research, I've decided that the state of Rhode Island cannot proceed with the licensing and regulation of medical marijuana compassion centers under current law. He went on to say that he believes that patients should have a safe, reliable and well-regulated access to marijuana, but says that the Rhode Island compassion center law is, quote, illegal under paramount federal law. He also goes on to say that, quote, I have received communication from both the United States Department of Justice and from the United States Attorney for the District of Rhode Island that large-scale commercial operations such as Rhode Island's Compassion Centers will be potential targets of vigorous criminal and civil enforcement efforts by the federal government. I cannot implement a state marijuana cultivation and distribution system which is illegal under federal law and which will become a target of federal law enforcement efforts. Federal injunctions, seizures, forfeitures, arrests, and prosecution will only hurt the patients and caregivers that our law was designed to protect. That's an unquote. So activists in the state are already plotting a course of action to take in the face of Governor Chafee's statement. Dr. Seth Bach, one of the dispensary potential dispensary owners who was accepted by the state to open the Greenleaf Compassionate Center in Portsmouth, has decided that he will take the state to court. He says that his concern is that the governor made this decision without reaching out to the stakeholders in the matter and did all things behind closed doors, calling the governor's willingness to, quote, issue a decree from his ivory tower that should concern all voters. So it looks like patients in Rhode Island are under the same hopeful notion that weed fairies will provide them with a safe alternative that they have a legal right to possess. Oh, Governor Chafee. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Somebody's chicken. Somebody's afraid of the big, bad federal government. Governor Chafee, I wonder if you could uh, take a moment to uh, look at the Google and uh, take a look at what's going on in the state of Colorado where they have a state medical marijuana revenue enforcement division. They've got an entire state branch of government, a bureau here, a department that does just what you're talking about, just what you say the feds would clamp down on and start issuing lawsuits on. Have you seen any lawsuits or indictments in the state of Colorado? I was just looking at a map the other day that was a a correlation of all of the dispensaries, infused product manufacturers, and other types of uh, medical marijuana centers in the state of Colorado. It was amazing. The push pins on this map just covered the entire, uh, you know, from Denver West. Uh, I don't know what's up with Eastern Colorado, but uh, from Denver West, just dispensaries and infused product manufacturers everywhere. And the state is bringing in revenue from this. If the feds were going to pull the trigger on this, they would have done so already with California or Colorado, states that are uh, definitely Colorado, a state that is so regulated uh, the use and the uh, distribution and manufacture and sales of medical marijuana. The fact is the feds don't want this fight. They don't want to take this to court. They don't want impartial justices looking at the possibility that the 10th Amendment might still be in effect in our Constitution. They know they lose this battle in the battle of public relations. They know there is 75 to 80 percent support nationwide for medical marijuana in this country. And Governor Chafee, shame on you for trying to say that this would hurt the patients worse than them not being able to get the damn medicine in the first place. Stupid Stoner Stories As a public service, Normal reminds you that smoking marijuana will not make one stupid. However, some stupid people do smoke marijuana. Don't be one of those stoners that make the rest of us look bad. Learn your lesson from today's... Stupid Stoner Story.
for us. I love it. And let's end the week with a stupid stoner story, a cautionary tale that says, hey, kids, don't try this in your town. A 22-year-old Durant, Oklahoma man was not taken to jail, but questioned by the police yesterday over his Craigslist posting. On Thursday, an undercover officer says that he sold the man marijuana after answering a listing from a man who was looking, quote, to buy some green. The narcotics officer had been communicating with the man through text messages for a few days and offered to sell him some marijuana if they could meet in a public place. The man told the officer he had been unable to get any marijuana in about four days and was needing some real bad. The officer met with the man. He gave the officer some money in exchange for marijuana and asked him if it was okay to contact him and buy some more later. And then after he left the scene, several other officers in the area made contact with the young man who cooperated with the officers and gave them consent to search his residence. Officers found drug paraphernalia and a substance suspected to be K2, that synthetic marijuana, inside his residence. He told the police that it was stupid of him to post it on the website, but he could not find anybody locally to buy from, so he took a chance. He was released and told that complaints of possession of marijuana and paraphernalia and use of a telecommunication device to facilitate a drug transaction would be sent to the Byron County District Attorney's Office. <laughs> Uh, folks, uh, back in my day, it was, uh, you know, no text messaging this stuff, no using the phone. Now it's the internet. But uh, regardless, try and remember that this is still illegal. And the cops troll these message boards and Facebook postings just looking for easy ways to get arrests and to get uh, asset forfeitures here. And that you may have heard that charge in there, that use of an electronic device to facilitate a drug transaction. Yeah, they pile on these extra little charges that can cost you even more time and more money. Don't do it. Make a good network of friends, meet people in person, but do not leave any sort of trail that allows the authorities to come back and arrest you. All right, I've got some news here that I wanted to bring up as well. Of course, it's harvest season, and there's a spate of stories up here that I've uh, gone through about uh, violence uh, with regard to medical marijuana gardens. A story up here on the Sacramento Bee at sacbee.com says marijuana garden shootout leaves one dead, five in custody in Amador County. Neighbors reported a few shots shattering the night in rural Amador County, then more gunfire exploding like rolling thunder. Sheriff's deputies racing to the former horse property near the town of Iowa found 779 marijuana plants, bullet-ridden trailers, and a dead man covered in blood grasping an empty shotgun. On Thursday, two days after the wild shooting that allegedly involved gang members trying to steal marijuana, Amador authorities held five young men in custody. They were juggling both a homicide investigation and a probe into possible illicit dealings in the name of medical marijuana. The deadly incident illuminates the dangerous lure of marijuana gardens, medical or otherwise, during the fall harvest season. The investigation also underscores... Uh, uh, law, law enforcement's dilemma in determining at what scale medicinal cultivation may constitute illegal pot growing or trafficking. And in another story uh, on the other side of this, this is from the uh, Greeley Tribune. Uh, this story, Weld family accused of beating and torturing suspected marijuana thief. For the second time in two months, members of a northern Weld County family stand accused of taking the law into their own hands. This is in uh, Greeley, Colorado. Three members of the Pino family of Hereford were arrested Thursday after a Wyoming man said they beat and tortured him with a two-by-four and with a knife, among other things, for trying to steal marijuana from their property. Family members are also accused of firing on sheriff's deputies after mistaking them for more thieves. Three Pino brothers also face assault charges in the beating of a man they blamed for killing their father on August 13th. Lazarus Pino, age 35, his brother Juan, age 22, and their mother Pamela, age 57, face a slew of felony charges in the alleged beating of the Wyoming man Monday. Lazarus and Pamela are in jail in lieu of $500,000 bonds. Juan's bond will be set today. Uh, this is, uh, once again, we're seeing the violence inherent in prohibition. And my, my fear is that when the ma mainstream, when normal folks see this, regular folks that don't know much about cannabis, I should say, uh, when, they, when they see this, they can't separate the marijuana gardens, the medical marijuana, and the violence here. And we need to do it at, at, for them. As activists, as people that are better educated on the issue, we've got to tell them that, yeah, you don't hear many people getting in gunfights and 
and shooting people and dying to try to protect the 12 pack of beer in their fridge. And we don't see many people trying to get in uh, home invasion robberies over someone's home beer brewing equipment. That just doesn't happen. We don't see people that are, are tying up, beating and torturing uh, thieves trying to come on their property to steal their cartons of cigarettes. That just doesn't happen in a legal regulated market. It's very rare, few and far between. Let's get the violence out of the marijuana market. There's 25 million of us Americans who want this product. We're never going to stop. You've got to let us have our way. All right, folks, time to take a break here. When we come back, we'll be speaking with Herb Thrasher and some great rockabilly music with Hank Williams III. Right back after this. It's 20 after the hour, and we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Times Medical Cannabis Cup is coming to Detroit on October 15th and 16th. That's right. The world's premier medical marijuana competition will be in Motown to celebrate the cannabis economy of the Great Lakes State. It's a two-day expo at Burt's Warehouse Theater, showcasing the movers and shakers of the Michigan medical marijuana industry and the merchandise that makes the machine go. There will be seminars with leaders of the medical marijuana movement, doctors, patients, researchers, growers, dispensary owners, and activists. Plus, High Times own cultivation editors Danny Danko and Nico Escondido will roll into town with the goods on growing great ganja. Be there for an amazing Saturday night VIP party featuring top musical performances and special guests. High Times will award the Medical Cannabis Cup for top indicas, sativas, hybrids, concentrates, and edibles entered by Michigan's dispensaries and collectives. Come to Birch Warehouse Theater on October 15th and 16th. Visit MedCanCup.com for all the details. Celebrate cannabis in Michigan. Celebrate the resurgence of Detroit. Be part of the growing cannabis community. If I were to tell you that in America, right now, over one million children sell marijuana, what would you think? Would you think that any public policy that creates over one million teenage marijuana dealers needs to be re-examined and possibly amended? You would not be alone. The members of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, a.k.a. NORML, have been working since 1970 to reform marijuana laws such that responsible adults, not children, sell and use marijuana. Isn't it high time to reform America's misguided marijuana laws? This is Alan St. Pierre, Executive Director of Normal in Washington, D.C. Only concerned citizens can effectively end the federal government's nearly 70-year-old prohibition on responsible adult marijuana sales and use. Want to know more about how you can help? Contact us at Normal, toll-free, 888-67-NORMAL, or by visiting the organization's popular and informative webpage at normal, N-O-R-M-L, dot org. Hello, Mr. Mann. Hi. I'm doing, I'm, I'm working. I'm sorry, no food till this is done. In today's busy world, we're inundated by advertising for all types of pharmaceuticals that come with a laundry list of potential side effects. Shouldn't you have better medical choices? Natural alternatives to pills pushed by Big Pharma? At Alternative Medical Choices, you could choose natural, safe, and effective alternative therapies that are right for your budget without nasty side effects. Cannabis, or marijuana, has been a legal medicine in the Pacific Northwest since 1998. Our doctors will help determine your qualifications for a medical marijuana recommendation in Oregon, no matter where you live. Our massage therapists will ease your aches and stress with soothing hemp seed oil or cannabis-infused massage salves. We also offer acupuncture, Reiki, and other alternative health therapies. Call Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon at 503-288-5579 or visit our website at www.altmedchoices.com. We specialize in out-of-state recommendations. That's www.altmedchoices.com or call 503-288-5579. It's time for your daily toker tunes, the best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today, we take you into the weekend with Rockin' Friday. Our segment features the best of rock, metal, 
punk, and jam band music. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Team. All right, everybody. Welcome to Friday, and we're getting ready for the weekend. Lots of good college football. I believe all my teams are undefeated. How about you, Herb? Uh, for the second week in a row, we'll play a uh, top 15 team. What about Boise? <laughs> I see how this is going to work. All right. We'll have to work that out tomorrow while we're watching the game. Say, hey, man, how's it going? Dude, it's going great, man. We're fired up this week, man. Not only are we going to get to play two Hank Free songs tonight, but myself and Normal Rock, we're going to go to the show. There's a sold-out show tonight here at the Roseland to Hank Free, and so I'm going to go and check out all three sets. I'm freaking fired up. Oh, yeah. Of course, uh, Hank Williams Sr., of course, the great old country legend. Hank Williams Jr., a.k.a. Bo Cephas, out there doing his kind of country boogie thing. And now, Hank 3, tell us a little bit about his music and how it may differ from uh, his uh, grandpa and his dad. Well, it, he's really been compared to uh, his grandpa a lot. Uh, how it differs is, uh, along the way, Hank three listened to Slayer and the Misfits, <laughs> and uh, along with his his grandpa, and so he was always able to, to combine this this harder edge. But but his country music is really this total traditional. It'll make you think of the Grand Ole Opry, although the Grand Ole Opry won't have anything to do with Hank three. No, but his his music is totally that kind of style, and uh, he, he he plays. He plays three different sets. There's a country set and then more of a, a, a rockabilly kind of uh, doom metal set. And then he comes out and then he just thrashes your ass. <laughs> oh, sorry, Pookie. But uh, he just thrashes, uh, you know, your butts off and just total metal. And so his dad, thanks for putting both Cephas in there because uh, he's definitely both Cephas. Uh, you know, the music really hasn't been too compared and they're not really the same. Both Cephas is definitely more uh, of a country kind of uh, 80s pop product of country and these guys were more of the traditional classic country right now uh, another uh, thing that we want to make sure that we uh, tell people before we get to the songs is the debut of Normal Rocks with Herb Thrasher coming up on October 14th yeah yeah we're really fired up we've been working really hard Uh, we feel like uh we know definitely that uh, my personal opinion is, is there's there's a lot of activists out there, uh, which which is all of us in, in the show for sure, but there's just a lot of activists out there who rock, and uh, we listen to a lot of music, and then, and then there's a lot of musicians out there, and man, they're, they're really interested in, in what we're doing. They're interested in these issues. They're just busy, and they're doing their music and their things, and a lot of times if we listen to their songs, they're really activists too. And so I, I really want to, I, I feel like this show can, uh, can bridge that gap a little bit. We'll be doing a lot of interviews. I'll get to play uh, new music and, and older music. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you guys have got a glimpse of, of the show and what we're trying to do so far, it, it's not about just one style of rock. We're really trying to play a lot of different kinds of rock. And this show will, uh, will give us more of that. And we'll get to have some fun and, and bring some weirdness, uh, late night kind of style to it, too. So we're excited. It's October 14th. And uh, we're going to have an 8 o'clock slot, and uh, it's going to be on the normal network, and uh, you're going to be there with me helping out producing and laughing, and you're going to play your bass, and <laughs> you're going to freaking rock and have fun. And so I hope everyone uh, adds that one to their schedule, and you know, if you're going out that night, it might be a good thing to turn us on, and whatever, East Coast, when you get home at 11, turn us on. We're going to be rocking. Right on. All right, and uh, let's get to the music. Let's. We got a double shot of Gutter Town and Troopers Holler. So tell people a little bit about these songs. So he, Hank uh, Three just put out a uh, four CDs at once. It's really unheard of, but he, he's just been worked out. It sounds like he's been in a basement or a barn just freaking working for like a year. But uh, there's a double. The Ghost to a Ghost is a double disc, and that's more of the country style. And then he has attention deficit domination and that's more of the doom rock album and then he has three bar ranch cattle calling which is just freaking crazy crazy stuff it's 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 like the auctioneer cattle dudes over thrash and speed metal and so <laughs> it, it definitely it, it definitely takes a taste for that one but, yeah you know hank man he, he he pushes man he's the king of hellbilly man he's an outlaw and he just pushes boundaries and so what we're going to have today is a couple songs off the, the more country 
ghost to a ghost and uh the first song is uh gutter town and uh it's just a great straightforward traditional kind of uh country hang free song and then the song to follow is a uh, trooper hollow and that's more of and he's added some of that hellbilly kind of the the rock and it's just a different kind of flavor to that country style so you get two kind of country styles and uh it should be cool, you know. It, it, it definitely rocks in its own way, and he's out there doing his thing. And so I hope you guys uh, like it, support Hank, and uh, get out there and support your local music and uh, keep supporting cannabis. Right and Have on. a good weekend. You guys keep rock. Have a good football weekend. I'm normal rock and all the other good shows. All right, we will. This is Hank Williams 3 with the first of the double shot. This is Gutter Town on Normal Rocks. I've been all around Gutter Town looking for a better frown beating on misery's door Looking high and looking low I guess I'm one of those lost souls who just don't quite fit in no more Drifting, used and feeling down staring at another round Will my time turn into day? Taking good times when you're blue there be someone there for you when you're dying on your dying day making it through is what I do to get over you making it through That we all know Take what you can And learn from it I once saw Satanist Lose his life He was rolling the devil With his dice I guess he was ready To call it quits Fighting all night Just to keep in line Trying too hard Not to lose my mind Watching all the folks Doing the same I've been all around Gutter town Looking for a better frown Why can't no one here remember my name? Making it through is what I do to get over you. Making it through is what I do to get over you. Hank Williams 3, Gutter Town, from one of his new albums out there. One of four new discs that he's just dropped on September 6th. 
Big thanks to Herb Thrasher for the tunes. Also, don't forget, October 14th, the debut of Normal Rocks with Herb Thrasher, our new rock and roll show here on Normal Show Live. All right, time for another one. Hank Williams 3, this is Troopers Holler on your Rockin' Friday Double Shot. I'm running my dog in the Tennessee holler, listening to what he's saying. I'm running my dog in the Tennessee holler, listening to what he's saying. I'm running my dog in the Tennessee holler, listening to what he's saying. What he's saying, old trooper done got that big old coon. I can hear that's what he's saying. Old trooper done got that big old coon. I can hear that's what he's saying. Old trooper done got that big old coon. I can hear that's what he's saying. <laughs> He got that coon and now he's ready to see his bits for lay. He got that coon and now he's ready to see his bits for lay. <laughs> Trooper's gonna say If you're stepping on my land You know what old Trooper's gonna say If you're stepping on my land You know what old Trooper's gonna say If you're stepping on my land You know what old Trooper's gonna say yeah. <laughs> Hit that sign again today. That sun's going down. It's time to hit that shine again today. That sun's going down. You know it's time to hit that shine today. That sun's going down. It's time to hit that shine again today. <laughs> I'm a runner, my dog in the Tennessee holler, listening to what he's saying. I'm a runner, my dog in the Tennessee holler, listening to what he's saying. <laughs> You want a copy of that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker tunes from the main menu. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. 
Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Tokers, there's no good reason to get your dog stoned. While it might not harm them physically, imagine being a dog who already begs for treats all day and then imagine that dog having the munchies. Not cool. I've heard police work is dangerous. It is. That's why I carry a big gun. Aren't you afraid it might go off accidentally? I used to have that problem. And what did you do about it? I just think about baseball. Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place? Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook rolls all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history. Profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. Mary, quite contrary. How does her garden grow? Don't ask me. I'm just the voiceover guy. Ask High Time Senior Cultivation Editor Danny Danko in our normal show lives, Cultivators Corner. All right, welcome everybody. So glad to get here to this Friday. Uh, we missed him last Friday. It's usually the fourth Friday of the month that we speak with Danny Danko, but uh, Danny was busy, so we pushed it ahead to this fifth Friday, this rare fifth Friday that we get. Danny, how you doing? I'm great, Russ. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. I know you got to be real busy because uh, that High Times Medical Cannabis Cup's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, what's the latest on it? Yeah, it's in uh, it's October 15th in uh, in Detroit, and uh, the latest is we've got uh, Royce the Five Nine and Four Twenty Punk Mob performing, um, which is pretty exciting on that uh, Saturday. And then we've got two days of panels and, and expo, and you know all the usual stuff that we bring our, our prop one area I think it is in, in Michigan and uh, yeah it should be really exciting and I just uh, just returned the reason I couldn't do the show last week I was in uh, Basque Country in Spain uh, working on a story about a seed company called Dinosun so that was pretty interesting too mm. uh, yeah so it's right. been, it has been busy but uh, a good a good kind of busy yeah yeah and how about uh, upcoming episodes of uh, High Times Free Weed with Danny Danko we play it on uh, yeah. Wednesdays at 5 and people are itching for a new episode Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the the circumstances have been that I wasn't able to record uh, last week or the week before, but we are recording uh, Monday and Tuesday for the Wednesday show this week, and hoping for a, a real a real good uh, good show this week. It's going to be our eighth uh, eighth episode, and you know we're working on securing some really nice guests for from the activism spectrum and the cultivation world, and. Um, we're going to go the full hour, if not if not more, this week, just to uh, compensate for having missed a couple of uh, a couple of weeks prior. Oh, right on. Well, uh, I want to remind yeah. everyone that we're taking live cultivation questions here on our Cultivators Corner. You can dial in to 971-533-7111. That's 971-533-7111. And ask your questions of High Time Senior Cultivation Editor Danny Danko right now. The phone lines are open. We're also taking your call, your uh, questions through our chat line at Ustream. And if you 
get into the chat there. You can uh, send them to me, uh, Radical Rust, by private message, or you can send them. Uh, you can send them uh, just right there in the main chat window, and Cannabis Carry will pick them up and uh, and bring them over to us in our private chat. However, you'd like to get your question answered, this is the time to do it. Now, Danny, there's been a lot uh, going on as far as uh, medical marijuana, and of course, it's harvest season now and outdoors. And uh, I, I I did some news stories today about grows being you know invaded, being robbed, and I'm wondering if you might have any tips for people that are currently harvesting to you know help keep their grows secret or how they should you know protect their grow. Well, um, I mean, the first thing is just definitely not to let a lot of people know about it uh, as few as possible. Um, with the ideal number being just yourself. And then, uh, you know, dogs are man's best friend. They're also uh, grow, you know, garden's best friend. Uh, you know, your first real line of defense is if, if there are uh, invaders or people on your property, you know, snooping around, the dog is going to know long before you do and uh, hopefully alert you to the presence of uh, somebody. And then, you know, there's a lot of, of, of items now on the market, uh, motion detectors, um, cameras, and, and things that, basically will will discourage thieves and also, you know, just posting signs, um, making them aware of the fact that you have camera system and motion detectors and that, you know, especially in medical marijuana states that you're compliant with the uh, state law and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, those are the, that's three good ways. And then, you know, obviously, you know, some people will sleep, you know, in a tent out by their outdoor garden or greenhouse. Um, you know, that never hurts to be as close to the plants as possible because, you know, rippers tend to show up when they're least expected in the middle of the night or, or you know, at times when you may may not be near the plants. So, um, and harvesting, I mean, you know, it's it's going to smell. I'm the most really is when you're trying to and you start drying, you're really uh, getting rid of a lot of that moisture and a lot of that odor is permeating. So, uh, anything you can do to cover up the odor if you're if you're in a you know well trafficked area, but um, hopefully you've chosen your location wisely and and you don't have that that issue. Yeah, we'd hope so. Now you know I there's two things I didn't hear you mention, and I'm glad they weren't mentioned. And that is, pack a gun or build a booby trap. <laughs> you know that's the thing I want to yeah, get to is both, here. Some people think you know oh, I'm going to set up some sort of you know big elaborate system to catch the guy or something. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Definitely don't do that. As far as guns go, I mean, I know, you know, some people have them, uh, and, you know, I can't tell people what to do, but my personal philosophy is that having a gun brings violence to you, you know, Mm -hmm. in some ways, unless it's, you know, for protection against, you know, animals or something like that. If, If you have a gun with the intention of using it to defend your your pot garden, um, you might want to reevaluate the whole situation at, at that point. I just I, I, I've lost too many friends to gun violence to, mm-hmm. to be to be supportive of that. Yeah. And booby traps, same thing. I mean, that's more trouble than it's worth. You're going to get in more trouble if you injure someone with a booby trap than you will, for the most part, for growing. So um, your best bet, like I said, is just to post signs to make those people aware that, hey, uh, you know, they're not going to get away with uh, robbing you. I'm going to be anything that's going by here. Um, basically, that excuse is Brooklyn now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, both of those things are things I definitely would not recommend. Um, you know, people who live in remote areas where there might be bears and, and uh, coyotes and things like that, they may need a, a gun. Uh, you know, but I would say, you know, definitely not to be used on other human beings or yeah. even, yeah, just, I don't know. I just think find that, that to be bad karma for, yeah. for growers. All right. Well, we've got uh, a live, anybody, really. <laughs> yeah, we've got a live caller calling in, 503 area code. You're on the air with Danny Danko. What's your question? Hello. Yeah, this is a Reen 420, a stature of uh, a few years. I just haven't been in the chat room with us. But um, I have a question for Danny. Uh we have a, fly, a few flyers going around Oregon. One of them's called the Oregon Cannabis Connection. And um, in the June-July edition, it talks about uh, the 12-1 method for vegetative growing. So where you um, do 12 hours of light, five and a half hours off, and then one hour of light in the middle, and then five and a half hours of light off again. So you immediately yeah. save five hours. 
of electricity right off off the top, and I want to know why it's not taught in any of the girl books. And it's in um, you know some what it but what it does is is it, it it limits the amount of light. It, it keeps your plant in the vegetative stage, but it really limits the amount of light that you, the plant is getting during that stage. So um, I really I recommend eighteen to twenty or so, maybe even twenty two. Uh, hours of light during the uh, that's, re- that's really stage. not that's really not a natural light cycle. Twenty two hours of light, so <clears throat> I really well, don't understand I mean, that. It's not, I'm not that. saying I'm it's not. No, it, it was what's more unnatural is to give a plant light in the middle of the dark cycle to shock it into staying in the vegetative stage. Now, if you're trying to save money, it's it's not the worst thing in the world. But I it I think uh, you know you're depriving your plants of light. Uh, so I've been doing this vital. method for I've been doing this method for two or three weeks and I've seen immediate results and I encourage everyone to give it a shot and it's um, not any more stressful than what you're recommending and I'll take the off air comments or all right thanks for your okay, call great. yeah yeah good luck with that um, yeah shout out to all the people in the chat room and the, and the people who uh, have been following the show and everything um, you know there's a lot of different uh, opinions and varying ideas about light cycles. Um, I tend to just keep it simple, like, you know, 18, somewhere between 18 to 22 hours of light during vegging. If you're trying to save money, I would go with the 18. Um, interrupting the, you know, doing the five and a half hours, the 12, 12 hours of light, and then five and a half with, with an hour of light in the middle. Um, it is going to keep your plant in the vegetative stage, but you're only giving your plant 13 hours of light a day. So, you know, inevitably it's going to grow slower during that vital vegetative stage. Now, you will be saving money on electricity, um, but I think you'll pay for it in the final yield. Hmm. All right. You know, I I just uh, put my plants under strobe lights. That takes care of the whole problem. No. (laughs) All right. We have another question coming in from Spike420 wants to know, how many weeks before harvest should I flush my plants? Uh, I recommend uh, two weeks. That's usually about enough uh, for a uh, long flowering sativa. Yeah, pretty much if indicas or sativas, two weeks is a good flushing time. Um, if you're growing hydroponically, you can get away with a little less because the medium isn't completely saturated um, with nutrients as much. You know, it's not oversaturated the way that soil can get towards the end of flowering. Um, but I, you know, I would say about two weeks is good, and you'll see a little fall coloring, uh, and that's okay. I mean, that actually is showing you that, um, and uh, you know, a lot of those uh, minerals and salts that are leaving the plant, um, which is really what you want as you approach uh, harvest day. Okay, uh, Hempster four twenty wants to know how exactly does light dep work, and I guess he means light deprivation. Mm-hmm. Light deprivation is a technique uh, that's kind of been pioneered in uh, Northern California. It's, it's spreading now. I even saw people in Spain uh, doing that. And what you what you need is a greenhouse uh, with a retractable darkening uh, device of some sort. You know, it's, it can be as crude as you know every 12 hours uh, pulling on and off uh, like a dark curtain from the top of the greenhouse or some of them are automated with a winch that people turn to to do the covering and uncovering. And some of them are actually like solar powered or motor powered, um, which is probably best if you're not gonna be there every 12 hours to either open or shut it. But what what it does is it gives your plants the 12 hours of flowering, even if there's, you know, naturally 14 or 18 hours of sunshine. So you can start the flowering process earlier in the summer and you can be harvesting in, you know, June or July rather than September, October. And, you know, what that does is it helps you avoid the rippers. It helps you somehow, sometimes avoid, um, you know, helicopter police flyovers. And it also can help you avoid uh, typical issues with mold and pythium and, and fusarium and things that usually attack around now, you know, in, the, in you know, September, October time. Uh, if you're already harvesting in, in July or August, uh, you can avoid that. And uh, the people and people also outdoor growers can can get two harvests in the summer um, from 
doing light deprivation as well. So mm. uh, it's definitely something people are pioneering and, and have been doing for years, but it's becoming more and more popular. Mm. You know, there's there's something, a, a subject that came up at the uh, Portland Hemp Stock, and I've heard it bandied about a couple of times, and it's this, uh, it's about hemp, industrial hemp, and sometimes I hear outdoor growers saying things like, you know, if they, if industrial hemp's made legal, uh, you know, keep it away from the Emerald Triangle, grow it in Tennessee. Someone said that on our, our show yesterday, or at the hemp stock, they were saying, boy, if somebody tried to build a hemp field not near my medical grow, I'd burn their hemp field down and shoot their dog. I mean, how much is there to this, you know, whether or not hemp, if it's made legal, how it would affect outdoor growing? How far would it have to be away? What kind of things could you do to prevent the pollen from cross-pollinating? I mean, is right. this really a worthy scare? Um, you know, I mean, if it's within a mile or two of, of your grow, it, it can, you know, pollinate your plants in it. And so it is, it is um, you know, people are being a little bit alarmist, I would imagine. And I think that if we can get the cooperation of the hemp farmers, uh, they can grow hemp without releasing pollen by either using uh, feminized hemp seeds, you know, or, you know, and growing all female uh, hemp plants. Because to them, I don't think it matters uh, in the hemp business, from what I recall, whether you're growing male or female plants. Sure. So, and the hemp fields that I've seen up in Canada uh, in years past, they had males and females next to each other um, because they were growing for hemp seed. Mm-hmm. But if you're growing for fiber, um, then they, they can really, yeah, you really have no issue with uh, cross pollination. Uh, if anything, our our rogue males might pollinate their <laughs> their females and raise their raise the THC level on the hemp plants. But hopefully, it wouldn't work the other way. And really, that relies on uh, I guess communication when the hemp starts growing. I mean, it really depends on what you know, what the hemp farmers plan to do, whether they're growing for seeds, whether they're growing for fiber, um, and, you know, how cooperative will they be that, you know, they're obviously like-minded in some ways, so they're not going to want to, you know, do anything to dilute our gene pool. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's definitely a valid concern, but I don't think it's something people should be freaking out about. Uh, and I think that there's there's answers to solve that, that issue, whether it be planting the hemp, in specific areas that that are far enough away from you know places where you know tons of people are growing cannabis, non not non hemp cannabis, or whether it be uh, you know adapting you know the, their seed stock in order to you know not end up uh, pollinating large swaths of of the area. Mm-hmm. You know, and when people react like that to these things, I. Uh, my reaction to that is, hey, I have an idea. Let's make it legal and figure it out, <laughs> right? Let's, yeah, let's yeah. Not make I mean, things... if, they, if, if they're if they're using that as a reason to fight against hemp, then they've they've sort of lost the the course of of what we're trying to accomplish. So yeah, exactly. The alarmism and the sort of like freakouts that people have on these issues are, you know, they tend to be just that. They tend to be overreactions and. You know, there's always ways and, and, and things we can do um, once we do free the flower and the hemp and, and cannabis. You know, then we can we can get down to the business of figuring out how everyone's going to coexist. You know, that's not that's the that's the easy part. That's a high case. class problem. <laughs> exactly. Hey, folks, we're just out of time here. Unfortunately, if you didn't get your question answered by Danny in time, you can always send it by email uh, to uh, dan at hightimes.com. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah, or Dear Danko at HighTimes.com, and uh, I'm going to answer the questions either uh, on the show or in print in the magazine or both. You know, I've been um, I've been answering a few of the questions I get from from the podcast in the magazine as well. So, uh, yeah, it's helped let people know. It's HighTimes.com slash FreeWeed, and uh, you can subscribe there, and uh, and we're going to do a new show this week, next week, and very excited about and right on. Stay tuned. More Danny Danko uh, coming up this next Wednesday. And of course, the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup in a couple weekends away in Detroit, Michigan. You'll see Danny there. So you got to make it out yeah. there. It's going to be great. One thing I want to mention yeah. about that as well, actually, is we, it's going to be our first um, veterans and pot panel, which I'm oh. really excited about. Mich- Michigan is the home of uh, the veterans for mer- medical marijuana movement. So I, I, I'm excited about that too for post-traumatic stress syndrome and a lot of the major head injuries and things that our veterans are suffering. 
um, they need to get cannabis instead of prescription pills or alcohol. I completely agree. Thank you, Danny, for everything. We'll see you next time on the show. We love the earth. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. All right, everybody, for Cannabis Carry, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week. For those of you listening live, stay tuned for Toker Talk Radio. And until next time, take care of each other, Tokers.